Hello, I'm Jim Lampley. Welcome to this look back at the stories behind De La Hoya Trinidad, one of the most memorable fights in 30 years of boxing on HBO. By the time Puerto Rico's unbeaten Felix Trinidad faced off with unbeaten Mexican-American Oscar De La Hoya in 1999, the competitive dominance of Hispanic fighters in many weight classes had eclipsed all other ethnic groups. After years of escalating passions, expectations for what was billed as the fight of the millennium could scarcely have been any higher. Any story like this needs a start. It needs an ambulance. It needs something where people look at right away and see something special. And for Oscar De La Hoya, it was winning an Olympic gold medal with his mother having recently passed away and him having promised his mother on her deathbed that he was going to win a gold medal. When I took the gold medal, it was the most exciting moment. At the same time, it was the saddest moment of my life. I was on top of the podium listening to the national anthem, holding the gold medal, flowers, thinking about my mom. Reflected off that gold medal was the Latino version of another golden boy, Sugar Ray Leonard. From East L.A., De La Hoya had movie star looks, a high wattage smile, and serious talent as a fighter. In Hollywood, an actor or an actress who can open a movie big is bankable. He's a matinee idol. I mean, he looks like Rudolph Valentino in The Sheik. Oscar is someone who 16-year-old girls need to see. What other fighter do you see 16, 17, 18-year-old girls going to the fight, paying $50 to go see, and can fight nobody? They get your autograph, they faint, they cry. That's what it's all about to me. I love that. It, I enjoy it. I'm bringing something new to the sport, some excitement to the sport. De La Hoya created excitement inside the ring as well, where he was soon recognized as one of boxing's top fighters winning title belts at 130 and 135 pounds. But transcending the sport, coming across as a packaged teenage idol, turned off many hardcore Mexican fans in his own neighborhood. They felt they were the ones being transcended. I hate to say this, because, you know, I'm, I'm a Mexican-American, just like Oscar. But for the hardcore boxing fans, they think he's crossed over. They think that he cares more about his looks than trying to be the best fighter of all time the Mexican people. They pay the managers to see an action, a brutal fight. Like the old time, like in Rome, when the, the Tigers eat the people. So Oscar never accomplished that. De La Hoya attempted to change this perception when he faced beloved Mexican warrior Julio Cesar Chavez. Beating and humiliating an aging legend was satisfying to De La Hoya, but he couldn't make Chavez's fans love him. That's the meanest looking Oscar De La Hoya you've ever seen. You're gonna embarrass this old, now a really old fighter. Again, who's still revered in, in the country that in, where you want to be revered, and you're just gonna make a fool of him, really. He sort of threw coal on the fire with the Mexican fans. Felix Trinidad had none of the cultural dilemmas associated with an immigrant group, quickly becoming the favorite son on the island of Puerto Rico, following in the footsteps of Roberto Clemente. I tell Tito every time that we, we get together, I said that I was very proud of him. I said, you were carrying a torch that actually my father carried at one time. He's rightfully proud of his heritage, of his roots, of his achievements as a Puerto Rican, and he stands for the values and principles of the Puerto Rican people. I love you, Puerto Rico. He has uh, not learned English was actually seen as something very good among a lot of Puerto Ricans because, you know, he's not really, like, uh, selling out. He really wants to stay one of us, a humble guy who's a fighter fighting for us, which was uh, contrary to what some people thought that Oscar de Hoy was, that it seemed like Oscar de Hoy was really fighting for himself. Not only is, is Felix Puerto Rico born, but Felix is more in the style of the warrior. He is the fighter that comes out and wants to finish a fight if possible, with one punch. Trinidad's success was built on lessons taught by his trainer, manager, and father, Felix Trinidad Sr. Everything I learned since I was a kid, I learned from my father. 
He always said that I was better than he was. And another thing I learned that was instilled from him was to have courage, to have guts, to never fear anyone. The father and son combination would win their first professional title in 1993, when a 20-year-old Felix Trinidad defeated welterweight champion Maurice Blocker. My dreams as a father and as a trainer were that he become a champ as an amateur, which he did. And when he turned pro, I wanted him to do it again. I wanted him to become a champion, and we did it. My father is a person who neither tries to control my life nor me. Whenever he said, Tito, we shouldn't do this because it's not good for us, or Tito, let's do this, whatever my father said, I agreed with him. Now contrast that with Oscar de la Hoya, who has a love-hate relationship with his father. It's a relationship of boss and employee in many respects. I think the mother was the love, she was the charm, she hugged him when the father yelled at them. For a long time, Oscar's father would never praise him. And Oscar told me one time, I would give up my gold medal and all my belts just to hear my father say he thought I was a good fighter, but he never will. He would never tell me that I was doing good, that I was a, a, a good fighter. Found out that he, the reason why he didn't tell me is because if he would tell me that I was good, then it would kind of like get to my head. I'm waiting for that moment. It's making me train harder. It's pushing me to uh, you know, go that extra mile. Despite a strained relationship with his father, De La Hoya was becoming a bigger and bigger star, a rare celebrity prize fighter. But it wasn't until his battle with the unbeaten Ike Corte in 1999 that he asserted himself as a potentially great fighter. I thought that the Corte fight was a glorious celebration of Oscar's good qualities. A tough round-by-round -round struggle. Oscar knocks Corte down, Corte knocks him down. I thought the fight was basically even coming to the 12th round. And down goes Corte on a classic he didn't depend on the judges. He didn't depend on being fancy. Bellaway is right there. It's Leonard Hearns all over. He went after Corte in that 12th round and won the fight, and that still to me is his finest hour. Even in one of De La Hoya's most dramatic victories, he would still receive harsh criticism from the person closest to him. I'll still go back to the Corte fight where Oscar is looking horrendous. What's the most compelling figure on screen? It's Joel De La Hoya jumping out of the seat, running along press row, screaming at Oscar, willing his, his son to fight. It wasn't love. It wasn't do this for me. It was you better do this or else you're not my son. Soon after defeating Corte, De La Hoya signed to unify the titles with Felix Trinidad. Suddenly, 1999 was looking like the early 1980s when the welterweight division was at boxing's forefront. Like Leonard versus Hearns won, a fight between two young stars in their primes. De La Hoya versus Trinidad was going to decide who was the major force in boxing below the heavyweight division. Two undefeated fighters, same weight, same age, in their prime, didn't like one another. That had mystique written all over it. The La Hoya fight was a, not only a big fight for Trinidad, it was looked over here in Puerto Rico as one of the biggest things ever. People thought it was a do or die situation for Trinidad. What was on the line for De La Hoya in this fight was the defining moment as to whether or not he could actually earn the respect that he so richly wanted. He had one man in front of him, a man that had the respect of the world, and if he could win this fight, Oscar gets over. De La Hoya versus Trinidad grabbed the public's attention, but the historic rivalry between Puerto Rico and Mexico triggered raw nationalistic emotions. Puerto Rico and Mexico go at it in every sport, and when you take it to boxing, you're talking about just one-on-one, -on -one, one country on one side, one country on the other, and just two men in the ring. I think, in, in a way, they, the, the real head-to-head -head came in De La Hoya Trinidad. You had Puerto Rico and their favorite child, and you had Mexico with a, with a fighter that they had adopted. Uh, they ne had never felt that Oscar De La Hoya was one of them, but they were going to borrow him for this one. The tremendous hype of the fight was realized the day before at the weigh-in. They came up with the idea that this fight was so big, we should do it in the arena. The weigh-in for this fight was something special. This felt like a World Cup final between Mexico and Puerto Rico. When Oscar came out, 
you saw one of those moments that you see once in a while in boxing. I couldn't make the weight anymore. And I was so concerned that I took everything off. And the arena just went crazy because apparently my trainer, I told him, keep the damn towel up. And he apparently brought it down and they just, I, everybody went crazy. I said, what's going on? I looked down and <laughs> I'm like exposed to the world. Oscar De La Hoya, 147 pounds. The weigh-in was a preview of what would go on in the arena the next night. We knew the atmosphere was going to be over the top. On a weekend of electric excitement in Las Vegas, five years of eager anticipation among boxing insiders and fight fans climaxes with the welterweight summit meeting between two unbeaten knockout artist champions, Puerto Rico's Felix Trinidad, Southern California's Oscar De La Hoya. What boxing truly needs tonight is a fight that lives up to or even exceeds the very high expectations for this fight. It would also be nice if we got a decision that was just in the end. Trinidad used the national spotlight to draw attention to the controversy on the Puerto Rican island of Vieques, where the U.S. conducted military exercises. There were always these accidental deaths of someone because of this. And there was one death which occurred, and people were saying enough is enough. And when Felix Trinidad walked into the ring showing solidarity with the people of Vieques, he couldn't ask for anything better. Wherever it was, whether it was a big screen or a TV set or whatever, it created a bridge directly to the hearts of every Puerto Rican watching. The time has arrived for the ultimate confrontation. 12 rounds of boxing for the welterweight championship of the world. Elite Tito Trinidad Oscar De La Hoya. This will be a key fight. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Of course, just touch trust and love. Let's see, también aguanta. People knew that Oscar had boxing skills and that he was going to have to outbox Tito to win. But nobody realized he was going to do it that easily. He was giving him a clinic. You're, you're taking him to school. You're giving him a boxing lesson. I, I remember leaning over to the guy next to me and sort of in shock and said, De La Hoya is making Trinidad look foolish. Harold had to score the first three rounds. Three to nothing. 30 to 27, Oscar De La Hoya. Beautiful ring generalship. Good, clean punching. Oscar wins on those two points. And he's trying to, like, chase me, and, and, he, and he's lost. So I say to myself, OK, if I, if I continue on this and pop my jab, right hand, throw a few combinations here and there, then I can win the fight. Box this guy to hell, Oscar. Just like you said you were going to do. Give him a boxing lesson. Popping Trinidad with a four-punch combination, stepping forward, going to the body, back upstairs. Out class is too big a word for what's happening here, but it's verging on that. Harold, how do you have it through nine? Jim, six rounds to three, 87-84, Oscar De La Hoya, boxing beautifully. As the fight moved into the later rounds, De La Hoya's successful boxing strategy deteriorated into retreat. Oscar's always been the one to close the show. Now he's trying to close the show by guaranteeing a victory for himself simply by staying away from Trinidad. I have to admit I was a bit tired. I've never boxed like that in my life. My legs were shaking. I, I thought I had to fight in the bag after nine rounds. So I'm gonna cruise the last three rounds. And that's what my corner told me too. So I said, okay, let's do it. You, you got him controlled. You, 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 you got the fight. Both Alcazar and Gil Clancy in his corner told him you have the fight won, and they basically instructed him not to engage Trinidad too heavily, don't risk too much, and turned out to be terrible advice. Two more rounds. Okay, that's it, and we were home. You can blame the corner, you can blame the people, but inside the ring, it's it's only you. How do you feel, Oscar? Okay. Yeah. Uh, box the next two rounds. My corner was telling me box them and then you have to fight in the bag, but 
when it comes down to it, hey, it's, it's my fault. He made a choice that rather than get knocked out, rather than get hurt, he would take a chance that he had a big enough lead to stay away. And he basically threw away the last three rounds. He lost a lot of fans within his own ethnic community by fighting the last three rounds against Trinidad the way that he did. That is not the way a Mexican fighter would have fought that particular fight. He's finished! We gotta take him now! He, he's, all, he, he's all beat up already! Now we gotta go for to work! Now it's your fight! He seemed uncomfortable because he kept running. He knew that if he stopped to fight, he could have been knocked out because he knew I was a harder puncher. That's why he was always on the run. At the end of nine rounds, he had a three-point lead. All he needed to do was win, win one of the last three rounds, and he would have won. You can feel the scorecards narrowing as round 12 begins. Harold Letterman, how do you have it going into the last frame? 105, 104, six rounds to five. Oscar De La Hoya. The, Jim, the question is, can you win a fight running away? Many questions to be answered after these next 55 seconds go away. George, you tell me, do you think that De La Hoya has won the fight the way he's fought the last several rounds? I don't think so. I think he had the fight in control, and now he's leaving in the hand of the judges. As the crowd awaited the decision, many believed that De La Hoya's popularity in Las Vegas would give him the edge with the judges. Well, we've talked and talked about the home court factor. The question of whether Tito Trinidad can get a decision against Oscar De La Hoya in Las Vegas. Oscar lived in Los Angeles, but his town was Las Vegas. He'd fought there so many times, his biggest fights he fought there. And if you're going to outpoint him, you'd better beat him convincingly, otherwise he had no chance. I knew that Oscar won the fight. I mean, the first nine rounds, the worst it could have been was 7-2. There was no way he could lose the fight. Michael Buffer has the numbers in his hand. Glenn Hamada scores the bout 114 to 114. He has it even. The first uh, scorecard. When they announced, uh, it was like such a close call. I said, oh, OK. Here we go. I'm going to be part of a shady situation. Bob Logis scores the bout. 115 to 114. I was confident that Tito had won. We knew he had won it. However, there was still the possibility that they would steal it from us. And Jerry Roth scores the bout. 115 to 113 for the winner by majority decision. De Puerto Rico and a unified welterweight champion of the world, Felix Kiko Trinidad. That answers the question whether Felix Trinidad could get a decision against Oscar De La Hoya in Las Vegas. Yes, he could. The celebration of the Trinidad victory went from the ring in Las Vegas to the streets of Puerto Rico. I had beat the Golden Boy. It was a moment of great emotion. I cried when I heard the decision. It's a moment I'll never forget. De La Hoya's first reaction to the decision was denial. You know, um, I, I know I won. I, you know, he's a great fighter. I thought I put a boxing lesson of my life. Once away from the ring, shock and outrage would soon merge and explode. I, I landed 120 more fucking punches, man. Shit. Fucking give him a boxing lesson. That's what that's King bullshit. When I got into the locker room, I went berserk. I, I started crying. Like, my gosh, how can they do this to me? I was devastated. I was just crushed. I remember punching one of those little lockers that those rooms have because I got so mad. In that moment of despair, Oscar found comfort in the place he would least expect it. When my father comes up to me and tells me, uh, you know, you, you fought a beautiful fight. And I was like, whoa, OK. I mean, when I lose, now my father tells me I'm a great fighter. You know, it's like, but it felt good. It felt really, really good coming from him. Promoter Bob Arum believed the scoring was affected by a pre-fight meeting between then Nevada Athletic Commission Chairman Elias Ghanem and the Trinidad camp. There was something fishy in appointing the officials. The Trinidad camp and Don King were making noises about not wanting to come to Las Vegas because they 
said that the Vegas judges would favor De La Hoya. Bob Arum was aware that this meeting happened. Dr. Gonham called him before it happened and he said, I'm gonna have a meeting with Senor Trinidad at my home. Bob Arum encouraged that meeting. It was really more of a meeting to just say, look, here's the process that we follow in Nevada. We have followed it for 100 years. We're gonna follow it this time. It's gonna be a great fight. Everybody's gonna love it. And the true champion's gonna emerge. And certain assurances were made at that meeting to Trinidad. The assurances, I believe, were to the effect that the officials would be talked to before the fight. You wouldn't go to them and say, we want you to be fair for this fight. That's kind of silly when you think about it. These are the best in the world. You go to them and you say, it's a big fight. You know, this is important. Bring your A game. Nobody ever talked to me about any assurances before the De La Hoya Trinidad fight, unequivocally. The conventional wisdom is that Oscar dominated early and then gave away the last three rounds. Look at Jerry Roth's scorecard. The first four rounds, he has Trinidad winning three of those four rounds. That is preposterous. I didn't bend over backwards to go the other way at all. And I'd be more than happy with anyone, including you, Mr. Harum, if you want to watch that fight with me with the sound turned down round by round, we'll have a good discussion about it. And Loges' scorecard is so unbelievable that even Loges must have realized it because he gives the 12th round to Oscar De La Hoya to make it closer, and Oscar didn't throw one punch in the 12th round. So his scorecard is suspect. There is no way that Oscar De La Hoya lost the fight with Felix Trinidad. He's the promoter. His fighter lost. And I would expect him to feel that his fighter won. Somebody forgot to tell Trinidad's fans there was a controversy. The following morning, all of Puerto Rico welcomed him home. People everywhere, flags everywhere, music, dancing. It was a great party. I mean, people did not go to work. The government gave the day off to the people just to be able to say hi to Tito. I went on stage and said hello to all my people. They were chanting and cheering. It was a beautiful moment, an experience I will never forget. And like I said that day, we beat Oscar de la Hoya, and the Golden Boy is no more. The fight exceeded the hype in one important way. The 1.4 million buys on pay-per-view made it the richest non-heavyweight event ever. But the fight itself left a lingering aftertaste of disappointment and a question of what could have been. This had all the makings of Leonard Hearns, Hagler Hearns, Prior Arguello. I think the interesting story is, why did the cake not rise? What was missing? When I think of Oscar De La Hoya versus Felix Trinidad, it's a story of two guys who weren't quite what we thought they were. Oscar De La Hoya put on this tremendous boxing performance. He couldn't close the show. Felix Trinidad, he had a guy in front of him looking for an excuse to lose. And Felix Trinidad couldn't give him one. It was a good fight. But if De La Hoya had fought better, it would have been one for the ages, a classic. It was supposed to be the fight of the millennium. They said it didn't meet the hype. It was not my fault. I did my best. I gave my best. He was the player. There are lots of ways in which I wouldn't want to be Oscar De La Hoya. I wouldn't want to have to try to explain to myself from time to time for the rest of my life why I willfully gave away the biggest fight of my career. If I had the opportunity to do it again, I wouldn't cruise. I, I, would, I would go in there for the kill because I felt so confident that night that I can do anything I want. And yeah, I made a mistake. I did cruise and, and it was the biggest mistake of my life. I think those last three rounds opened up his whole career for debate. If he had won that fight, he would be considered a great fighter, simple as that. Nine minutes might have blown it all. If the meeting between the two 26-year-old stars was anticlimactic, surely it would be redeemed by a rematch. It has never happened, and if Trinidad sticks to his retirement, it never will. De La Hoya has the hollow satisfaction of having watched Bernard Hopkins dismantle Trinidad using a carbon copy of Oscar's game plan. But fight fans wonder whether a rematch might have enhanced both careers instead of what happened in Las Vegas. 
Thanks for watching The Tale of De La Hoya Trinidad.